Okay, so the first thing we need to do is align the camera. So press 7 on the number pad, then Control Alt number pad 0. I'm going to Shift A, add in a circle, and then press T to open the toolbar here. So I'm just going to increase the radius so it fills the screen. And also we want to choose the fill type to be triangle fan, and it's important we do that. Press H to hide it, and we're going to add in another circle. This is going to act as a detail. The fill type can be nothing, and the vertices can be 64. So press Alt-H to bring everything back. And we select the first circle, and we're just going to name this so we don't get confused. Okay, so we select the second circle, which is the detail, and we tab into edit mode, E to extrude, and S to scale. Just going to add a bit of a a black line around it. So we just come to materials, add a new material. Also if we scroll down here to settings we can change the viewport colour so we can see it better. Okay, so we want to just select one of these and just drag it up slightly on the z-axis so it's not clipping and just scale it down a bit. And give that a material as well. Okay, so now you've got that done, what we need to do is add um, a modifier to the first circle. So I'll add a new modifier, and we'll come to generate and down here to build. So if we scrub through, we can see it builds it, but over too many frames, and it's actually going the wrong way. So what we can do is come here to start. We want it to start on the first, uh, sorry, for the first second, which is frame 25, and we only want it to last for 25 frames. So that's for one second. So after one second, it'll start and it will only last for one second. So it's actually gone the wrong way, so check the reversed, and now it actually works the way we need it to. So the way to repeat this, um, we're going to just add a few keyframes, and if you've not used keyframes before, it's very simple. We're just going to jump here to 25, which is the first, which is the start point, hover over start and add, press I to add a keyframe, and we're going to scroll ahead, and what we want to do is jump one frame before the finish, which would be frame 49 and we're going to press I to add another keyframe as it is jump one frame forward and now we just want to add a whole seconds which will be frame 50 and then press I to add a keyframe and it starts all over again so what we need to do is again at frame 74 we need to add the keyframe press I then jump one frame ahead we need to change this to add a new second which will be 75 press I to add a keyframe and just repeat. It can be a little bit confusing until you understand, I mean I probably didn't explain it the best way, but um, yeah it's very easy to understand once you've done it a couple of times. You just add in a second ahead, and again it depends on how many frames you want to use, I've been using 25 frames as a second, so you want to use 24, 23, or 29, it's up to you. Okay so now we've got five, it goes around five times, um, the next thing we need to do is add a needle or a pointer. So let's just add in a plane. I'm just going to scale this down, it's going to be very crude. You want to take more time in modeling the details, but for this tutorial example, I'm, I guess this will work fine. Okay, so it's in its starting position, and that's the way we want it to be, pointing straight up. So I want it to start off at frame 25. Okay, so what we can do is press the automatic keyframe button here, Press R once and then right click, so that there is set a keyframe for it. So we jump one frame ahead by pressing right on the uh, keyboard, keep right on the keyboard arrows. Just press R to rotate and then do the same. Just keep jumping ahead, R to rotate, jump ahead, and you want to do that all the way around. Okay, so when you come to the last frame, instead of just rotating it manually, we can press Alt-R, and that will reset the rotation, then press R, then right click, and there we go. It's completely, uh, it's back in the rotation where it started. Okay, so now we don't want to be doing this five more times, so the best way to do it, if we split this window, and change this to the Dope Sheet Editor, and what we want to do, don't worry about the rest of these keyframes, we just want these three here, so where it says plain, plane action and location rotation scale. We just want them three highlighted. So just B to box select and we just want these three here. Don't worry about highlighting the, the ones above. Um, it will automatically do that. So we want to press Shift D 
We want the uh, the new keyframes to actually be on top of the old keyframes just by one keyframe. So instead of just touching like this, we want to go one more and just complete the action. Because the, um, yeah, if we just go through now, you can see it stays on. If it didn't work, then obviously the needle wouldn't be in the, the position it is now. It would be broken. So I don't know if this is a bug, but if we shift D and duplicate it again and try and do it, you know, just what we did, for some reason it doesn't work. So I'm just going to um, control Z and just undo what we did there. So you just need to shift D, from, make sure these three are selected, shift D, and then make sure you place it on top, and then do it again, and just keep doing it for however many more times you need to do it. So I only need to do it four more times. And again, it can be very tricky placing these keyframes on. You might want to zoom in more to get um, a better view of it. But if we scroll through now, everything should work fine. And straight away you can tell if it isn't working because the needle and the white um, partition won't be lined up. So yeah, so that works fine for us. Let's just join this again. So I'm just going to add some text, which is going to be the countdown. I'm just going to add a font to the text here, Let's scale this up, give this a material as well. Okay, so what we need to do is um, make actually convert these to mesh objects. So if we come to object here and just come up, we can just convert these and we want to convert them to mesh. So now if we jump into edit mode by pressing tab, we can just select one of these and then we can press P to I just want to scale these because these are a bit smaller than the rest of them so I'm just going to scale these first so now if we box select this press P and we can separate from selection and we want to do the same for the rest of them although we can leave the last one so now each of these are a separate object so we just select all of these we just drag them up slightly so they don't clip into the other material, the other objects. Okay, so now we want to press the space bar and type set origin, and you want to origin to geometry. So the origins are where they need to be. Let's drag this over here, and we're going to start with number five. So we want to snap the cursor to the center. We also want to snap this number five to the center as well. We can have a drag it over, but it's easier if we snap it. Now, if we come here and just drag this up slightly, and then to space bar, snap cursor to selected. Okay, so now we're going to uh, restrict the render visibility for these numbers. I'm just going to name these. Okay, so in the outliner here, what we're going to do is add keyframes similar to what we did with a modifier. So if we jump to frame 49, we want to add a keyframe to the visibility for number 5. Then on the next frame, we just want to turn it off and press I to add a keyframe. And now with number 4, we just want to press the snap cursor to, well, snap selection to cursor. And then add the keyframe for these. And then jump one frame backwards, and we want to turn them off and add a keyframe. So now if we scrub through, they work fine. So again, for number four, we want to get to frame 74, add a keyframe. This is frame 75, we want to turn it off. And this is where number three should be appearing. So add a keyframe, jump one frame backwards, turn it off, and we do the same for the, for the others. Again, it can be a little bit confusing until you get used to it. And I probably could have explained it a little bit better, but I mean, it's very simple once you start doing it. Okay, so now you might want to add a bit more detail, uh, depending on what you want to do. I just added a few more circles here. And a couple of lines, just to add a bit more 
detail to it. I wasn't sure what to go for with this countdown intro. I just wanted to be a bit, I don't know, not official. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so if you render it now in cycles, um, it's not going to look the best. So if we just add a lamp, a bit of a light source first. Add a sun. So I normally do everything in cycles, and um, there's a few times I could jump back into the internal render, but for something like this, um, yeah, it'd be best if we use the internal. Because if you see, there's some shadows there. We can jump into the materials and you know turn them off. But what we just do is jump to Blender internal. Uh, sorry, Blender render. We come to the materials here. We just press this button, and it just brings back all the materials that we made in cycles. But we have one difference. If we just render this now, everything's got specularity on it, which is gloss essentially. So what we need to do is come to the materials, and with each material we need to come to specularity and turn down the intensity to zero. Because we don't want any um, shininess on it. Okay, so there we go. We've got a very plain basic um, render now, so what we need to do is just throw this into the node editor, and we can add a few... Um, few different nodes and make it look different. So this part is again down to yourself, preference, what you want it to look like. I added um, a colour balance and a distortion node, just to give it a bit of edgy look to it, I don't know, <laughs> just make it look a little bit better. Also add a vignette. And there you go, you've got some like a countdown intro. Hopefully you can make something a lot better looking than this, and if you do, let us know in the comments. Um, yeah, so if this helped, make sure you like and subscribe um, for more videos, and yeah, thanks for watching.